Welcome back to the AWS Well-Architected Framework Quick Study. Uh, the next pillar that we have to talk about here is reliability. Reliability is pretty uh, straightforward. It just means that you recover from issues and failures. So whatever something crashes, you're not going to take like a day or something to recover. It's pretty straightforward. I don't really have that much to talk about. You know, the nice thing is that all of AWS services are built with this well-architected framework in mind. So they already have built-in support for a lot of reliability. You know, as a simple example, your storage services, whether it's database or S3 or whatever, they automatically back up and some of them even replicate across availability zones. So you have a good assurance of reliability. Other things like Route 53 or application load balancer or, or, or elastic load balancer, you know, these are all things that help with reliability, that if something falls for whatever reason, you can quickly get back up to speed. And then, you know, obviously the best way to be reliable is to anticipate failures before they happen and then prevent them that way. The design principles of reliability revolve around simulating failure conditions and validating the recovery procedures. So you can, you have tools in place where you can actually, you know, explicitly shut something down and see how you recover from it or test out your automated recovery procedures. CloudWatch can alert you if something fails. AutoScale can leave logs and can scale up and down and you can quickly be alerted if any anomalies happen. It's using the whole infrastructure that AWS provides, you can automatically recover. And then scaling horizontally. So this means that uh, many small resources are more fault tolerant than a single large resource. So in the example of EC2, you might choose to have several to many small AMIs as opposed to one or a few large AMIs. That way, if one of the instances fails, then the others can quickly uh, take its spot and the end user is none, none the wiser. However, of course, you as an admin or as an architect would know that this happened through the logs and through CloudWatch and through SNS. We'll talk about high availability later, but in the aggregate, being able to scale horizontally and add more instances as your demand spikes or vice versa, remove instances as your demand wanes allows you to be more available in the aggregate. And really with all these tools, you can stop guessing about capacity. You know, it's as simple as that. You have all the tools in place to just pay for what you're using. A key point here is manage change and automation. And so when you're getting ready to change something, rather than go in and change that individual service or that ind individual instance, the idea is to change the automation script for example, provisioning or deploying that service or configuring that service. So you make a change only to the automation process and then you run it. So if the automation process works, well then you know it's gonna be set indefinitely and is in that working state versus if it doesn't work, then you know that, that you can change something in your automation script and respond accordingly. However, if, if, if you go in and you change individual instances, well, you're setting yourself up for not being able to backtrack when something goes wrong or not knowing why something went wrong and not really being well equipped to deal with it in a scalable way that you know it will work from here on out. And so that's it for reliability.